Hey everyone, uh, this video is on transformations of exponential functions. And um, just a reminder that this is the general equation of transformations. So remember, A represents a vertical stretch or compression or flip or reflection. Remember that K represents a horizontal stretch, compression, or reflection. And also remember that the scale factor is 1 over k. And also remember that k must be factored out. Just a reminder here that d represents the horizontal translation and that C represents the vertical translation. So in this example, it says to state the base function and its transformations. And then we're also asked to provide the function notation and mapping notation, and then graph it and fill out the chart below. So we've got a lot of stuff to do here. First thing I'm gonna do is identify what the base function is. So my base function here is going to be, I'm gonna call this B of X is going to be, and if you notice right here, the input is being applied to this base of two. So my base function is two to the power of x, okay? Then I'm gonna write this out in function notations. f of x equals negative one half times b of, and then my input right here is one third x plus two, and then I'm going to say plus 1 on the outside right here. Okay, now I need to factor this k out. So here I'm going to say f of x is equal to negative 1 half times b of, when I factor that k value out, I get 1 third. I'm going to pull out that 1 third. And when I factor that out, I get x plus 6, because remember, I'm going to divide 2 by 1 third, which is the same thing as multiplying 2 by 3. And then I've got that plus 1 on the outside. But, um, we're asked to write out the transformations, but also the mapping notation. So I'm going to do it at the same time. So right here, this negative 1 half tells us that we have a vertical compression. The scale factor is a half but we also have a vertical reflection or a vertical flip. So what does that mean right here? That means that x, y is going to turn into, we know that the a value right here is going to be negative 1 half, and that's going to get multiplied by y. We also know that this is going to, um, this is the k value, and this tells us that we have a horizontal stretch with a scale factor of 3. So here, this is going to end up becoming 3x. Okay. This right here tells us that we have a um, horizontal translation. And we're going left 6, which means that this should be minus 6 right here. And then lastly, we have this... Um, vertical translation and this means that we are going to be going um, up one so that that's going to affect the y now let's apply this to our original coordinates for our base function which is b of x equals two to the power of x so here if you remember if i do like negative two if i do two to the power of negative two i get um one over four if I do negative 1, 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 half, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 2 to the power of uh, 1 is 2, and 2 to the power of 2 is 4. And now let's just apply this mapping rule. So let's do the first one together right here. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x right here. So this is going to be 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Then I'm going to subtract 6, so I get negative 12. Then I'm going to do um, negative 1 half times 1 fourth, which is negative 1 eighth. Add 1 to that. When you get your common denominator, you'll get 7 over 8. 
if you need a second to pause and double check and understand these calculations, please feel free to do so. Um, let's do this 2, 4 together right here. So I'm going to plug in 2 for x right here. So 3 times 2 is 6. And then subtract 6 from that, you get 0. And then I'm going to plug in 4 here. Negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and pause the video and find the remaining three points right here and come back and check to see how you did. Okay, so how'd you do? Hopefully you did all right. If not, let me know um, when you get a chance to ask, ask questions in class. Um, I feel like I need one more coordinate, so let's also add in 3, 8. 2 to the power of 3 is going to be 8. So if I uh, plug 3 in right here, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 6 is 3. And then if I plug in 8 here, negative 1 half times 8 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 1 is 3. So I'm just going to um, set up my axes. So I've got the x-axis here, the y-axis here. I'm going to go by 1s on the x-axis. And then um, on the y-axis, I'm actually going to go up by halves. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and graph these out. Now, negative 12 comma 7 eighths is too small, too far to the left. So I'm just going to skip that one for right now. I'm going to graph out negative 9 and then 3 fourths, which is right here. Negative 6 comma 1 half is right here. Negative 3, 0 is right here. 0, negative 1 is right here. And then 3, 3. 3, uh, sorry, um, everyone. This right here, when I do 8, negative 1 half times 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 should be a negative 3. Sorry about that. So 3, negative 3 should be down here. And I'm going to go ahead and connect these dots right here. Now, typically, we have a horizontal asymptote when at, uh, y equals 0. Right? We've got our horizontal asymptote right here when y equals 0. However, this time, everything has been shifted up by 1 and also flipped over. So if you notice right here, instead of at y equals zero, there's obviously not an asymptote there because the graph cuts through y equals zero. So here we actually end up having a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. So the C value can actually change where your horizontal asymptote is gonna be. And you always need to draw that in. Okay, so now let's fill out the information here. So the domain of this function, no matter what my um, x values are, I can always input any x value into x right here. So my domain here is going to be x is an element of all the reals. Right, if you look, I can go anywhere. Um, the graph continues this way as well as in this direction here. So x can be anything, but the range goes from negative infinity and ends at 1. I'm going to write this in interval notation just because I feel like I haven't done this in a while. So we can still remember um, interval notation. It will never touch 1, so I will put an open bracket there. If you look here, I have an x-intercept at negative 3, 0. So if we have transformations, we can actually end up getting x-intercepts because now my graph will never touch 1 but it can touch zero. Um, we have a y-intercept at zero, negative one. And the equation of our asymptote, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals one, okay? And we have one last thing that we need to do. It says rewrite f of x as an equivalent function with the same base. So we're gonna try one of, we're gonna try this one way. So if you look right here, our exponent has addition here. And because our exponent has addition, um, remember the rule is if you are adding exponents, it means you are multiplying um, common bases. So here, what this means here is this would be f of x equals negative 1 half times 2 to the power of 1 third x. 
And then this plus 2 right here means times 2 to the power of 2. And then I'll just copy down this plus 1. How do I know that I can do this? Well, because I'm just working backwards this time. When I have um, common bases and multiplication, I can just add my exponents together. Just like if I have x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 5, I can say that's x to the power of 9. Um, but now we're working backwards, and I'm saying x to the power of 9 could be x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 5. could be other things, too. could be x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 6. I'm just arbitrarily showing one example. When it says to rewrite as an equivalent function with the same base, you're going to have infinite possibilities. This is just like a basic example. Okay? So now that we've done that, if you take a look at this right here, you've got 2 squared right here. I'm going to actually evaluate what this is. And I'm going to copy everything else down. So this right here would be times 4, and then there's going to be a plus 1. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this by multiplying together just some constants that we have here. So negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. So I could say that this is negative 2 times 2 to the power of 1 third x and then a plus 1 at the end. Let me show you how this um, is actually the exact same function. So if you see here, this is the original function. I'm going to type in the new one that we got here. So negative 2 times 2 to the power of one third x and then i'm going to add one to it and if you see these are the exact same functions so it is an equivalent example let me show you one other option that you could uh, do there's multiple other options that you could do but i just want to show you one other option so another option that you could do is actually like rewrite this negative one half with a base of Two. So if you look right here, this would be f of x equals, this would be negative 2 to the power of negative 1 because a negative exponent means you need to do the reciprocal. And then I'm just going to copy the rest of this down, times 2 to the power of 1 third x plus 2 plus 1. Then I can add my exponents together here. So I can add negative 1 with 1 over 3x plus 2 and put that all together. I'm just going to copy this negative down. And then I'm going to have and then I'm going to have 2 to the power of negative 1 plus 1 third x plus 2 and then the plus 1 is going to go on the outside. And then when I collect these like terms together right here, I would end up getting f of x equals negative 2 to the power of 1 over 3x plus 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and then plus 1 at the end. Let's type that in and see if that's going to be equivalent. So y equals negative 2 to the power of 1 over 3x uh, plus 1. And then a plus one at the end and there you go it's the exact same function all three of these functions are equivalent to each other i'm going to challenge you and see if you can find another function that's equivalent to this all right that's it for this video let me know if you have any questions otherwise i'll see you in class